Hey everybody, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Again, as we continue to talk about being a medical student, we're gonna now talk about transitioning into that M3, M4 year as the environment is completely different than the one that you've been used to for the last 20 years. I really appreciate your comments and feedback. So again, part of my advice is because of your comments and feedback. So continue to give me those comments and that feedback. All right, we're gonna talk about transitioning from that M1, M2 year to that M3, M4 year, and that lifelong learning from the hospital environment. Again, this is different. In this environment, you have to come up with that multiple choice question and those foils, those answers that pertain to that question that are based on the patient laying in your bed. So what kinds of rules do I live by when I am looking at an M3 and an M4 or what I learned as I was an M3 and an M4? Here are some rules. First off, you're gonna have to study every single day. What do I mean by that? You're gonna look at your patient. Your patient's gonna have a problem or a diagnosis. Whether that problem is hyponatremia, whether that problem is acute kidney injury, whether that problem is appendicitis, whether that problem is cholecystitis, read about those diagnoses. Read about them, read about how to, if you're on the surgery rotation, how to operate on those problems. What's the anatomy? What are you going to do? What arteries next to where you're operating? What are the complications? Read about hyponatremia. What are the causes of hyponatremia? How do you treat hyponatremia? It's important to take that information from the patient, read about it, and then apply it to the next patient. That's called experience. What else? When I was an M3 at Iowa, they offered what's called a radiology externship. What did I do? So as a radiology extern, I got paid, I think $15 or $20 an hour, to hold the senior radiology resident's pager because they would page for stat studies or emergent studies, and then I would communicate that to the resident so the resident understood what was taking priority and what needed to take place right away. But it allowed the resident time to read other studies so they didn't get bombarded with pages. What did it do for me? Well, it gave me experience in the radiology department. It allowed me to first get exposed to chest x-ray, chest CT, body CT, understand how radiology worked, but it also helped me understand how the paging system worked and how to communicate with a radiologist. And I got paid for that experience. So that was important. I understood, I got that experience, and it really helped me become a better M3, a better M4, a better resident because I knew where the radiology department was located and I knew who to contact within that department. So if I needed to get something done, I could get it done quickly. So if your school offers externships, take it, do it. You'll be able to study when you're working. You'll be able to gain experience that is necessary to become a successful M3 and a successful M4. The other thing you have to do when you're an M3 and M4, you gotta learn on the fly. What do I mean by that? When you're walking around with the resident, going from place to place in the hospital, cafeteria, patient's room, see an emergent consult, you have to be able to take what they're saying and learn from what they're discussing and apply it to patients. So you're gonna need a short, dense source of information. Now, some people don't like it, Wikipedia, I think in that scenario, is a great source. What does it provide? It provides you with quick information. So that way you can understand what the resident or fellow is talking about, and you can start to formulate a plan for attacking and studying this material later. So find sources of dense, short information. So that way you can get that information quickly. One of the apps on my phone that I used when I was an M3 was called Johns Hopkins Antibiotics. What it did for me was I could type in an antibiotic or I could type in an infectious type of diagnosis and it gave me in paragraph form, and I'm talking two, three paragraphs at most, how to diagnose this infection, how to treat this infection, how the antibiotic worked and what were the side effects. 
So it gave me this quick information that I could read while I was roaming the hospital hallways. That's important. Read about your patients, okay? Read about your patients, help the resident, but don't do this. This one thing I don't want you to do. Don't try to outshine your resident or your fellow in front of the attending. It makes the resident or fellow look bad. And that's who you're gonna be spending most of your time with. I'm not saying don't learn. I'm not saying don't answer questions that are directed to you personally. I'm saying do not spend time to try to be better than the resident or fellow or let the attending know that you're better than the resident or fellow. You very well may be a better student, but it's important to understand that you guys are one team. You're all working together towards the same goal, which is to make certain that the patient gets out of that bed and gets home to a better quality of life or a quality of life that they can enjoy. So what do I mean specifically? If the attending asks a general question directed towards the residents, don't be the first to answer. Allow the resident to formulate an opinion and an answer. Some residents take a little bit longer than others. That's okay. Just listen and learn. Keep the answer that you might know to yourself. Understand that attendings, me, we are going to ask you questions until you don't know something. If you don't know something, that is okay. You're supposed to not know something because in this business of medicine, it is lifelong learning. So know that, understand that. Don't try to outshine the resident. When the attending is gone, help the resident as much as you can. Go explore the hospital. Understand and know where places are so that you can become efficient. You can help your residents get things done. There's a radiographic study that hasn't been performed yet. Go to the radiology department, ask why it hasn't been done, be nice, and ask if it can be done. No first names. If you know the first name of the ultrasound tech, Christina or Julie will be able to help you because you know their name, right? Same thing with the radiology techs. If you know Chi or you know Matt or you know Jamie, if you know their first name, they're more than likely to come and help you, okay? So do that. Know people's first names. It's another important rule when you're transitioning from classroom to hospital. Two more things. When you're on these rotations, you're gonna have to take that shelf exam at the end of the rotation. So study for your shelf exam as you're on the rotation. Don't wait till the week of your shelf. Study as you're going along. Try to apply what the patient is giving you in terms of experience to the shelf exam. Last thing I'm gonna say for M3, M4s, be nice to everyone, just like when you're an M1, M2. Be nice to the nurse, the nurse assistant, the charge nurse, the radiology techs, the ultrasound techs, the other attendings, the other services, the environmental services, be nice to everyone. Because I promise you, at some point, you're going to need said person to help you get something done. When you're nice and you know everybody's name, people are more inclined to help you. So again, I hope some of these lessons help you as you transition from learning in the classroom to learning in the hospital. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the comments and feedback. And remember, be better today than you were yesterday. And also, I am fully aware that I am what you all will grow beyond. Thanks for watching. Thank you.